Praise God. Praise God. I pray today that we have, you know, yesterday as we were reflecting upon whether we are cold, hot, or lukewarm, that you would have come to some sort of <clears throat> uh, decision as to where you are with the Lord and decide, God, as I'm um, getting older and, and your coming is even closer, that I want to be more and more alive and on fire for you. My life today as a Christian must be better than what it was a few years ago. And so he says, and we see here the reason why this church in Laodicea, why they became lukewarm. He says, because you're lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich. You say, I am rich. I have prospered. I need nothing. Not realizing, look at this, their assessment was that they're prospering. They need nothing. They're rich. But Jesus' assessment was this, not realizing you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, naked. His assessment was completely at odds, completely different, completely opposite to what their assessment of their spiritual state was. And so sometimes here we are and we can really have the wrong assessment of our spiritual state before God. We are spiritually deceived, so to speak. And there's a lot of spiritual deception. Sometimes there's a problem. In the church, sometimes we think that people in the world are spiritually deceived. We look at people in false religions um, or in cults and things like that. People deceived by New Age movement, Eastern religions and yoga, meditations, and all these different things. And we say, okay, they're being deceived into satanic stuff and the occult and, 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 and things like that. <clears throat> but in the church, can we be deceived? Yes, they were. And this church was in that same position because they were maybe doing well financially, materially, they were doing well. But their material prosperity had affected their spiritual sensitivity. And that happens so often. Why is it that the church in the West and in the richer countries always seem to be more spiritually insensitive? People seem to be um, uh, uh, dumb and, and, and numb to the things of God. Why? <clears throat> We're saying the same thing as this church is saying. The church is saying, I am rich. We've got beautiful buildings, um, carpeted floors, cushioned seats, beautiful curtains, beautiful windows. And you walk into the church and you're just amazed at, at, at the, the beauty of the building itself. People walk into the house of God and suddenly they're, they're, they're so well dressed and, you know, prim and proper and hairstyles and, and, and clothing and, and everything is expensive and got a great band and all these things. But where is the presence of God, we ask? I am rich. I have prospered. I need nothing. I don't need anything, God. I'm just going to come up here on Sunday morning. I'm going to be here and I'm going to check this off my list. I did this for Jesus again this week. I need nothing. It says, not realizing you are poor. You are wretched. You're pitiable. You're poor. You're blind. And you are naked. You are naked. That is the reason why. We need to come before God ever so regularly. We need to do what the psalmist said. Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me, know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Search me, O God. Lord, today as we come to you, we pray that you would search us. Shine your light upon our hearts. Let us know we are hot. We're cold, we're lukewarm. We may see ourselves one way, but you see us a different way. May you open our eyes to see where we are with you, God, and help us, help us to draw near to you and let your presence fill and permeate our lives today. Give us the desire to pray. Give us the desire to spend time with you. Give us the desire to spend time in your word. Give us the desire to share your word, oh Lord, and to work for you, do something for you in the kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Lord bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.